All right, section 3.2 is states and properties of matter. We have in your book only three states of matter, the solids, liquids, and gases, but I don't really like that because it's misleading. There are more known states of matter than just solids, liquids, and gases. In fact, if you look at the plasma here, plasmas consist of greater than 99% of all matter in the universe but it's not even talked about in your book. Um, examples of plasmas are fires, lightning, the sun, all stars out there, the light um, emanating from the tubes and fluorescent tubes um, are created by plasmas inside the tubes. Uh, so it, they're everywhere. And you know, the sun in our solar system weighs so much more than all of the rest of the solid matter in our solar system that you can start to understand why plasmas are greater than 99% of all matter in the known universe. So considering that, I've, I would say we should include plasmas. But we have this other one in here called a Bose-Einstein condensate, which has really only been known to exist for the last 10 years or so but it is it is a state of matter it may not be practical in our daily lives but it, i do want to include it because it does exist i don't want to leave out things if i can now there was one discovered about a year ago called the jan tellerson um and there's other ones that have been found i think in the last year but I don't really know anything about them myself. I haven't gotten to be able to do some research on them, to look into them and really understand them. But these, the ones listed here, I do know about. Now, the Bose-Einstein condensate occurs at very near to absolute zero or zero Kelvin. And what happens if you take a solid substance or a liquid or whatever and you cool it down to nearly absolute zero, the atoms in the sample begin to lose their identity and they form what are called matter waves. They are not really particles anymore. We'll talk about waves later in this semester, but they stop being just like if you imagine a basketball being an atom, they stop being that basketball, but becoming a wave. And all of those atoms in that sample that you would cool to form a Bose-Einstein condensate all become waves and they all merge together. So you get this one giant atom, quote unquote, that is really a wave. And they have some uh, strange properties, but like they are superconducting. If they're a liquid at that state, or they were liquid or whatever, they become superfluids and all this stuff. And so there are possible practical applications to Bose Einstein condensates that might come out in the future, but right now that's it's being studied. If your sample is not a Bose-Einstein condensate, but slightly higher in energy, you might have a solid. And solids are types of matter in which the particles are in fixed positions. They're touching each other. They move, but only by vibrating. And so because of this, solids have a definite size and a definite shape. If you continue to heat up the solid, it will melt to form a liquid. And liquids are similar in, to solids in that the particles are still touching and they have a fixed size, but liquids do not have a fixed shape. They're fluids. The atoms or the molecules can move around each other, but they're still touching each other, making them fluid. If you were to imagine taking a, a cube of wood and pouring it out of a glass, you would see it and it would flop down and just land there. If you had two of them, they would like, I guess dice would be a good example if you, you know, roll the dice. They're gonna 
land on the table, roll around for a bit, and eventually stop. They're not necessarily going to be touching because they're separate entities. They're not really based on each other. But if you take particles of a liquid, they're touching and attracted to each other, and they're so very close together that they will flow. Gases are still fluids. What, what is similar between a gas and a liquid is that gases have an indefinite shape. But they're different in the sense that gases have also an indefinite volume. So they take up the size and the shape of the container they're within. They can be compressed, they can be expanded. The particles are not considered to be touching, although they might collide with each other periodically. It's not, not nearly as common as with liquids. Um, so essentially you have the particles of gases being individualized in space. If you continue to heat that sample that's a gas to really, really high temperatures, for example, the surface of the sun is like 10,000 degrees, if you heat them up like that, the atoms or the molecules will lose or gain electrons and become ions. And even if, if they're molecules, the molecule can actually break apart into multiple pieces that become ionized. That itself doesn't really do everything. The electrons will go from one particle to another, and when that's happening, because they're so high in energy, when the electron goes back into an atom, it must release the excess energy given to it by the electron, and it does so in the form of heat and light. So that's why we can see all these things, because first you have the, the atoms or the molecules losing electrons, become, they become ionized. We don't see that part, but what we see is when the electrons go back in, they have to give up the extra energy, In the, they do it in the form of light. You give them energy by heating them up. You could give it to them by electricity. But picture the sun, it's always heating up. It's 10 whatever thousand degrees Celsius. And so there's energy there. There's heat there given to these hydrogen and helium atoms. But they're breaking apart because of it. They have all, all this energy associated with 10,000 degrees but they don't have their electrons. If an electron hits it and goes back in, it has to give up that extra energy that the electron had to stay at the same energy. It gives it off as light. And this happens millions upon millions of times every second. So it's not like we see one individual thing every moment. That's why we get a continuous source of light from the sun or from the light bulbs, the fluorescent light bulbs, because it's happening so fast. As you can see on this table, um, we've got solids, liquids, and gases with shape, volume, arrangement of particles, interaction between particles, movement of particles, and then examples of each. Um, you guys can look at that on your own time. It's in the book. I'm not going to go anymore because I've already kind of said it. Here's a picture I have um, of a solid, these little lines in here, that's indicating that they're vibrating. Here's another picture that shows solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. The rigid structure of a solid, the liquid here, they're touching each other and they're next to each other, but they're not in that fixed position. You have gases here. And then the plasmas there, those pluses and minuses, those indicate the ions, the charges. I'm assuming the purple dots in there are probably the electrons. Here are some pictures of plasmas. You've got lightning, you've got the sun, you've got one of those weird globe things that when you touch the, it's literally just a plasma going to your fingers. Plasmas are charged. Um, you're probably aware that your body can conduct electricity. This is how touch screens work. <laughs> and it's why you can get electrocuted. Um, so these the ions in the plasma in there, oops, 
are attracted to your skin. So that's why it goes to you. Here's another set of pictures that kind of just show the um, differences between these four, four states of matter. The Bose-Einstein condensates are on here. It's hard to kind of connect the two together. But this picture does show, in a sense, what happens in the Bose-Einstein condensate. We've got, at high temperatures, it, it considers these particles as billiard balls and they're moving around in random directions throughout time. They might collide with each other occasionally. At low temperatures, they become, start to become little tiny wave packets. This is at or near zero Kelvin. Those wave packets, instead of being particles, are going to start exhibiting the same or similar wave properties and eventually merge into one giant wave right here.